I'm Candace Pelletier. I was born in Houston, Texas, but raised in Oklahoma City since I was two. But I moved up to Western Mass seven years ago to come stay with my mother and get a different experience out of life. I moved up to Massachusetts seven years ago and I met my husband at my 23rd birthday party. He came over to a friend's house and he immediately started talking to me and wedged his way into my life in a way at the time that I thought was very cute and very sweet. I was with my husband for seven years. We were married for five. I tried to leave twice. The second time I was successful. The first time I tried to leave was the first time he got extremely physical and he ended up choking me against a doorway. And and I left for two days before going back and thinking to myself, I'd overreacted, he apologized, it wasn't a big deal. Um, so it took the second time for me to leave and not go back. In my second attempt to leave, it was, for me, it felt more real than it had the first. There had been lots of physical violence in the couple years between the first attempt and the second, but the second time I actually was making an attempt to call the police and let them know what was going on. And I get very, very scared of cops. So they were not something I had considered before that point. And I ran to the bathroom and I locked the door and I started to dial 911 and he broke the bathroom door down to get to me and to take my phone and to stop me from calling the police. And that for me, knowing that if I was in that situation again, that I most likely wouldn't be able to get any kind of help was so scary that I knew I couldn't put myself in the situation again. And it helped as well. In my second attempt, I reached out to my father, my mentors, my friends, and Everyone I had in my life, I said, this is what happened. And I was not afraid to tell them. I mean, okay, I was afraid to tell them, but I knew that next time it could be much worse and I probably wouldn't have an attempt to ask for help. So I asked for help from pretty much everyone and a mentor of mine who I'd known for a few years was able to tell me, grab your stuff, come to my house, you'll stay there, everything will be fine. And because I reached out and I talked to people about it, I was able to get the help I needed to get out of there permanently. I tried to keep a lot of what I was going through inside. I. I didn't like telling people m most of what was going on. And a lot of that was shame because I knew what they'd say. I knew they'd say, you need to leave him. You need to not put up with this. And that seemed 
so hard to leave, to make that decision because this is a man I've spent seven years of my life with. This is a man I had all these ideas about my future with. And to set those aside, it was so difficult. I kept feeling in the back of my mind, like it's dangerous, but at the same time I felt and hoped in some way maybe he'll change maybe he'll get better maybe he means when he's what he says when he apologizes and so most of the time i didn't tell anyone except maybe my twin sister she knew pretty much everything but she was very judgmental as well about the situation and that's that's what i felt i felt a lot of judging and it felt more like judgmental than helpfulness and I was scared of that and I wasn't ready to face the idea of maybe I don't deserve this, maybe I do need to leave because in some part in the back of my mind felt like I did deserve it. I, when I thought of the dreams I had for me and my husband, I wanted the typical house, car, family. I still want a job, I've never not wanted that, but I just had this idea that we would have a family together and we would live this long life where we grew old, rocking chairs on the porch together, making jokes. And when I left, I knew and I had to accept that those ideas that I had for our future weren't what were actually planned for my life and that I deserved more than what he was putting me through and the dreams that I had had were not worth what I was going through. If I hadn't left when the pandemic started, I would still be stuck with him, yeah, in the same place. But the pandemic exas exacerbated a lot of what was already going on and it made everything a hundred times worse to just be stuck together 24 seven. And I realized at the time, I didn't know the pandemic would obviously still be going on. But at the time I did realize I couldn't keep staying with him in that kind of situation when there was no income, no happiness, no getting out of the house. It just was not working and it was just making everything that was already happening just so much more dangerous. To those that are going through the situation that I went through, you need to understand that you are worth more than your abuser tells you you are. A million, million times more. You are beautiful and wonderful and you are capable of getting out and starting a brand new life. You do not need your abuser to fulfill you, to make you happy, to make you successful, to make you confident. You can do that all on your own. And if you are stuck with someone that is abusing you, you are going to have a hard time accomplishing or doing anything that you wanna do, even feeling good about yourself because you're having someone say bad things or hurt you and make you feel like you're nothing constantly. And you don't deserve that. The advice is just to try and talk to people, let them know what's going on so you can get help so you can leave because if you stay in that situation it will get worse it won't get better ever so you need to get out and you need to learn how to love yourself because that abuser is not going to love you the way you deserve to be loved